Currently, I'm working on a project requiring a large part, and there's just no way to print it without supports. But just adding supports, it's just going to really increase the print time and use up a lot of filament. Neither one of those options are going to work for me. I'm going to show you how I overcame this issue by building the supports right into the model. I'm Bill, and this pushing plastic. Let's get to it. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. This is the model I'm currently working on. It's a large housing that measures 285 millimeters in the X axis, 285 millimeters in the Z axis, and 171 millimeters along the Y axis. This is going to use up most of the print volume on the K1 Max. I want to print this standing up rather than laying on its back. The red G-Tech silk filament will give me the look I'm looking for as in this orientation since it's the front, sides, and top that will be highly visible. The inside, not so much. There's two large openings on the front that will need supported, and obviously the roof of the model will need support. I designed the mounting hole tabs so they won't need supports when printing in this orientation. And the large oval cutouts on each side won't need supports either since each layer will build upon the previous layer. Typically, my go to slicer is Cura, but my plan is to use the K1 Max, and unfortunately, Cura isn't a completed option yet. Now, Reality Print isn't an option either. While the slicer isn't terrible, in my opinion, the support tools for Creality Print lack some of the basic features to manipulate the supports with good results. I chose to use Orca Slicer. Since it's a fork of Bamboo Studio, which is a fork of Prusa Slicer, I'm more familiar with that interface. Now, using Orca, Sli Orca Slicer gives me the option to use three supports and support blocker, both lacking in Creality Print. Orca Slicer has been proven to work well with the K1 Max so far. So, this is the right choice for this project. I sliced up the model in the orientation that I wanted it to print using the slim tree supports and support blockers in the obvious areas like these tabs, holes, and the ovals since they're all self-supporting and I sent it off to the printer. Now, about six hours into the print, one of the supports broke free from the print bed. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it was a combination of the support angle, printing with silk, the speed of the printer, and the vibration that all contributed to this failure. Now, I did make a desperate move to try to tape it back into place, but, well, that was a failure too. So I re-sliced, but this time, I used strong tree supports, and it failed again in the same area, and also in the back. Now, the support in the back of the model would have eventually supported the roof of the model, and without that support, there wasn't any use in continuing the print. Out of desperation, I laid the model on its back and re-sliced using hybrid support and sent it off the printer. Laying on its back was my last choice. Now, about 12 hours in, it became painfully obvious that I was going to have a lot of work to do in order just to clean up the finished print, plus it was a lot more support material than I wanted. The spool was near empty, and I wouldn't have another spool of that color for at least a few more days, so that print too was a failure. After four failed attempts to print the model, I decided to take another approach. I was going to build the supports right into the model itself. The first thing I wanted to know was how far could I successfully bridge on the K1 Max? Now, since the machine is still fairly new to me, some testing had to be done. So I downloaded these bridge testing parts from Thingiverse and set myself to print a bridge at 30 millimeters, 70 millimeters, and 100 millimeters. For this test, I used some of the oldest, crappiest, PLA I had laying around. I mean, I'm talking four years, no decadent packs, not put in the dryer. I wanted the worst 
case scenario. Having printed these out, I see 30 millimeters isn't a problem. 70 millimeters doesn't seem to be much of a problem either. At 100 millimeters, I'm starting to see it's getting a little bad there. So with this information, I think I can take it and modify my model to build the supports right in. Let's jump into Fusion 360. What I'm going to do is add a series of vertical ribs to the lower opening that follows this profile as shown in blue. Since my bridge test demonstrated that I can easily bridge up to 70 millimeters, I'm going to space the ribs at 40 millimeters apart from each other just to be safe. I'm going to make each rib 0.5 millimeter thick. This should be thick enough for support, but thin enough to easily cut off when the model is complete. Next, I'm going to add two horizontal ribs that are 0.4 millimeters thick or two layer heights. Again, this will make them thick enough to provide support but thin enough to easily be removed. I'll space these ribs roughly 35 millimeters apart just to have three equal vertical spaces. These two ribs just add extra support for the vertical supports. When I bring this into my slicer, I'll use the support blockers on these areas. Now I'll do the same thing for the upper opening. That looks pretty good. I think that will give me the finished quality I'm looking for. Speaking of quality, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional engineer, PCB Way has got you covered. PCB Way offers top notch printed circuit boards and assemblies with lightning fast turnaround times. Their user friendly platform makes it a breeze to upload your designs and get budget friendly quotes. Turn your visions into reality with PCBWay.com. I'm going to test print for proof of concept. Save time, I'm only gonna print the lower half. Since I'm only printing the lower half, I won't be using any supports at all when I slice. Since they're already built into the model, there's no need for it. If I was printing the full model, I would use supports, but for the roof only. Let's print this, see how we do. Everything is looking pretty good. All I have to do is use every maker's favorite tool and cut these pseudo supports off with. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Oh, that's no problem there. They are. With, with a few strokes of a file, I can smooth these surfaces out. That doesn't look too bad at all, especially using that old PLA I had laying around. Now, although I used Orca Slicer, you can apply this and use it on any slicer since the support is dependent on the model, not the supports built into the slicer. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, hit that like button and let me know down in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.